Welcome from uh, PCR London Valve. I'm uh, Patrick Serres and I'm here with Andreas Baumbach, Professor of Cardiology in Queen Mary, and then uh, Chris Terkelson, Professor of Cardiology in Iris. And uh, we have to discuss the concept of intermediate size of valve and extra large. And uh, obviously, uh, we have uh, Mary Life has introduced a new valve, the Octacore, and is very present in, uh, in London, in London Valve. But we are going to talk about uh, what has been published on the uh, previous valve. So the first question is for Andreas. Why intermediate size is something important? Was that an unmet need for the community? Well, I, I, I do believe uh, that it was an unmet need, and it's not really intermediate size, it's appropriate sizing. So the more we can adjust the valve size to the actual patient size, the less we will see embolization, rupture, the less we will see paravalvular leak, and we will get the optimal uh, hemodynamic outcome. Okay, so the mismatch, I remember one balloon expandable embolizing in the left ventricle and I could remember we put an in-way balloon, catch the distal, inflate the distal, bring it back in the aorta and make the employment. So when we talk about, uh, Chris, when we talk about different size, are we talking different balloon in the device or is that something drastically different? No, it's actually rather unique. So, so from Merrill, they have provided us with nine different sizes and it's, it's unique stent frames for all sizes. So it's not the balloon, but the stent frame that changed by 1.5 millimeters. So you can actually uh, also in these intermediate sizes uh, choose the appropriate size. So basically, in the manufacture, they are cutting in balloons of different, different sizes. Size. So that's a huge yes. inventory in, in slide and manufacturing process. Yes. Remarkable. So, Andreas, can you remind us what was the step in valve for the surgeon, for other technology, and what is the major step forward here? Yeah, so here we've got 1.5 millimeter. Uh, the standard uh, valve iterations or, or sizing uh, for transcatheter valves is three millimeter. Yeah. You know? So that's double that. The surgeons, uh, they work on two millimeter uh, differences. Right. And I think that if you look at the millimeter square, okay, the, the large will be 700 to 860. But I think it's interesting that there is always some kind of overlap. So you can eventually play a little bit on the downsize of upsize. That's very good. Now, Chris, you have the responsibility to summarize a little bit the published data. Uh, what yeah. is the incidence of use of that uh, intermediate size? So uh, previous publications indicate that if you have the possibility to, to choose intermediate sizes, you would probably choose it in around 40% of cases. And from our own experience, we have implanted more than 600 valves uh, from my valve and octocore in, in Western Denmark. So when you have the possibility, we actually choose uh, intermediate sizing in one out of three patients. So in a situation where with a 23 you would undersize and with a 26 you would heavily oversize and there's maybe a risk of endless rupture, you have the possibility to choose an intermediate size. And this you will do from our experience in one out of three. Yeah, I think it's important. I think that the paper we published in Kawashima was 2021. We yeah. look in 26 countries in Europe uh, we had something like 11, 25 patients, and the incidence at that time in 2021 was already 42%. Yes. So it confirmed what you yeah. do at your, in your institution. If you look, the connection with the bicuspid, is there anything you could say? I remember in that paper that uh, with the bicuspid, there was also some nice interaction between intermediate of Anything you would like to say on that, or that you know? I think we, from, from our clinical experience, we tend, of course, to not oversize so heavily with, with the, the bicuspid. Um, so there, there could be uh, several cases where you wanted this intermediate sizing right. for the bicuspid to avoid the risk of uh, rupture also. And, and the presence of calcium, asymmetric calcium, is that also playing in your choice of intermediate? 
Certainly. I, I mean, um, there's a risk that you, you won't expand the, the stent properly if you take the larger size uh, and if you take the volume out. So in these cases, we would certainly also choose an intermediate if that was the appropriate sizing, yes. So it's a reality, it's use yes. in 42% of the patient. Andreas, do we have any sign of clue of indices showing that it will improve the clinical outcome? Well, we don't have hard data yet, but there is a wealth of data coming in from two randomized trials to compare and the landmark trial, which will complete enrollment of nearly 800 patients uh, fairly soon. And there we will not only have the outcomes of these patients, but also compare the outcomes uh, to the standard uh, yeah. uh, sizing with three millimeter iterations. So when, when is this data going to be released, you think? Well, we hope that we will be presenting the landmark uh, data at uh, EuroPCR. Oh, God, that's good news. I mean, a new uh, appointment of a meeting where we will hear this information. Let's finish on the extra large uh, size, um, 30.5 and 32. Anything that you would like to say? I, I remember a paper of Alzheimer with a short series of only 10 Ks, by the way. Yeah. But uh, what would you say about this extra large, maybe your experience? I think we all, all have seen patients where we cannot treat them with the previous commercially available valves. And uh, there's a nice paper by Andreas Holzheimer from Regensburg, where he looked into more than 2,000 previous TAVI cases. And he could actually see that in more than 2% of cases, uh, the patients could not be treated with the previous available valves. I think this, this is different from country to country. Mm -hmm. So uh, our own experience is probably the same. Around 2% of patients, we, we need the XL sizes. So right. the 30.5 and the 32. And in some countries, it may even be higher. There are rumors that in the Netherlands, it's, it's even larger anatomy. So, so we, we now have a valve where we can treat patients that were previously denied for time. Right. So you mentioned the experience of, I think, the University of Regensburg. Regensburg yes. But I think that in uh, the technology of Medtronic and Edwards, they mentioned also 1.7, 2.8% of uh, uh, valve annulus, which is uh, beyond what yes. they can offer. Mm -hmm. Very good. So the last question is maybe for Andreas. Uh, what about, uh, what kind of data are we going to get and how soon we are going to get data on these extra large? It's, it's, it's early days, but uh, there's definitely a need and people are uh, uh, requesting the valve and, and implanting it. We have a nested registry in the landmark trial and the registry will continue. That's so good. we are at 31 patients out of 100 planned. Um, we might exceed the 100, but once we come to that point, we will release data and, uh, and show acute uh, and follow-up outcomes. A lot to see, a lot to hear in the near future. I thank you both, gentlemen. That was uh, to the point of these two new developments in the field, which are quite unique, we have to say. Thank you very much. Uh, back thank to you. the studio.